Okay, folks, I think I've discovered it. I think I have found Miles Morales' fatal flaw. I think I've found what makes him such an uninteresting character. And this comes from my having done a post-Bendis review of Miles Morales' story. Uh, up to this point, Brian Michael Bendis has been the only writer that Miles Morales has ever had. And now he is getting a new writer. Uh, it is uh, Saladin Ahmed. And he begins by doing something that I actually recommended be done, which is to add some supporting cast members to Miles Morales' story uh, in the form of two characters. One is a Mr. Dutcher, who is the vice principal, who is a vice principal at Miles Morales School, and he's someone who does not like Miles Morales on account of him thinking that he is uh, playing hooky. Uh, when, of course, you know, he is to go be Spider-Man. And, uh, however, he does have some admiration for Spider-Man. So later on in the series, when he learns that Miles is Spider-Man, he softens on Miles quite a bit. Uh, the other character is uh, this one uh, called Sean. Uh, you don't see his name on the page, but his name is Sean. And he kind of serves as a Flash Thompson-type character. The problem is, is that he only really appears one or two times in the series, and so we never really get much of a feel for him other than he's playing a Flash Thompson-type role, where he's kind of the cool kid and the bully and whatnot uh, that Miles would be standing up to if this guy were to appear often enough to make any kind of difference. Uh, so we've got these two new characters, but they don't actually make that big of an impact, so we don't get to learn anything more about Miles Morales through them, which is unfortunate. We also get a couple other characters. We get uh, Starling, who is the do uh, the granddaughter of the Vulture, Adrian Toomes, Spider-Man's old nemesis, going all the way back to uh, Amazing Spider-Man number two, actually. And so uh, Starling becomes kind of an ally and even love interest for Miles, but we don't get to see her associate with him that much, and so uh, we don't get a lot of character evoked through her either. And then uh, we actually get a little sister for Miles Morales. Billy Morales joins the family, but of course he can't really relate to a baby, so you know, what, are, what are we supposed to do with that? It's not, not exactly the most interesting character addition in Spider-Man history. Uh, we do get to see some new supervillains hit the scene. One is called The Assessor. He's like an artificial intelligence that puts Miles through all sorts of torturous trials to the point of uh, pushing him to the breaking point uh, over and over and over again. It kind of reminded me of uh, this, one of the, I think it was the second story arc in Wrath of the Eternal Warrior, uh, where you see Gilad basically subjected to all sorts of deaths and stuff, although I don't think this guy actually kills Miles over and over but definitely pushes him to the breaking point every time. And you kind of want to see, in this case, you want to see Miles rise to the challenge of fighting this guy. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what we get. Instead, uh, it's his dad and his uncle to the rescue. So this is a rather lame resolution that doesn't uh, give Miles the chance to develop the strength and character that we've come to expect from a Spider-Man. Um... Next, we've got the Miles Morales of Earth-616 returning to the scene. This, this Miles was originally introduced in the Brian Michael Bendis five-issue miniseries uh, Spider-Men 2. That's Spider-Men because it focused on both Peter Parker and Miles Morales. And at the end of that series, this Miles Morales actually travels to the Ultimate Universe from which the uh, Miles Morales we're familiar with originally came from before he was blended in with Earth-616 by the Miracle Man at the end of Secret Wars. And uh, he is basically uh, telling Miles about how he is uh, not from this universe, how he's from the uh, Ultimate Universe, and Miles is supposed to be getting back his memories of that universe, which you would kind of think is something significant considering that his mother actually died in that universe and he experienced a lot of things like a Galactus attack in that universe. Um, but you don't really get the impression that anything that this Miles Morales is telling him has uh, registered whatsoever. And so we never see any growth come out of Miles from the fact that he's from another universe. 
After this, we segue into what becomes Miles Morales' clone saga. He winds up facing three clones of himself, one of them called Selim, which means undamaged in Arabic. And so this is like the normal clone of Miles. Then you've got uh, some altered clones like the eight-legged Mind Slayer, and you've got uh, a shape-shifting shift uh, rounding out the, the trinity of clones. Now, at the end of this clone saga, Miles' costume is ripped to shreds, and he also doesn't want to be identified with the costumes that his clone trinity are wearing, so he gets a kid who is a budding fashion designer and who dresses kind of like Sam Smith um, and uh, complete with handbag. This is actually a boy named Kenneth who designs Miles' costume, and as you can expect, it is the gayest Spider-Man costume to date. Oh my freaking god. <sighs> so... Now that we've got Miles in new quote-unquote spider fits, we send him to a alternate universe where his clone actually won the day and is now ruling the, the uh, Earth of that uh, alternate universe. Um, and this is one of the rare moments where we do get to see some of the better parts of Miles' personality come to shine because he is very, very sympathetic and helpful to his uh, other clone, Shift, who really says nothing other but glurp, but is a very gentle soul otherwise. So you've got uh, Miles being a very, very nice kid here, which kind of is the point of the entire series up to this point. I mean, from all the time that Brian Michael Bendis has been writing Miles Morales up through this entire clone series and then this last arc which is called empire of the spider that saladin ahmed has been writing you get the impression that miles is a really nice kid he's he's such a nice kid and you kind of want there to be something more to him than him just being this really nice kid and i was hoping maybe i would get that from saladin ahmed's miles morales the end but in there miles is a nice older guy and he's just a really really nice older guy who's still got his spider powers, so you don't really learn anything about him from there. Uh, the What If series, based on Miles Morales, tells you absolutely nothing, because it's just five characters who happen to be Miles Morales from different universes, and they have nothing to do with one another. So what is Miles Morales's fatal flaw? Well, I'm starting to come to realize that the fatal flaw of Miles Morales is that he doesn't really have one. He's lacking a flaw that makes him relatable. He is this almost perfect kid, and it sucks. And, and there have been an occasional attempt to give him something more to his character, but it's never really rung true. For example, during Civil War, Brian Michael Bendis put forward this screed where he basically starts to identify Miles Morales with the darker parts of Peter Parker, when he's talking about how frustrated he gets with the world, how he's always having to fight the same supervillains, and in the second panel he talks about why is it that when everybody else is misbehaving, why can't I misbehave? Why don't I take what's mine and I can use my powers to take what's mine? It's just very, very copying of Peter Parker, because Peter Parker has this same kind of flaw. He's always having to fight the temptation to be self-aggrandizing, to be self-centered, to just stop worrying about everyone else and, for, and shirk his responsibility that his great power gives him and just focus on himself and making a good life for himself. And so you, you have Brian Michael Bendis trying to insert this into Miles by way of his connection with his father, who actually turns out to be a good guy, and his uncle, who, granted, is a bad guy, but has his um, heroic parts, and it just all rings hollow, because you know that nobody in the family is actually all that bad, so you know that Miles Morales really has nothing to worry about, especially since we've gone through, I don't know how many issues with him, proving himself over and over again, that he's this really, really nice kid without any kind of fatal flaw, which, unfortunately, just doesn't make him that interesting of a character. Now, I was hoping that maybe in the next series we'd see some uh, growth coming out of him. Uh, the next series is being written by Cody Ziegler, 
And I, I got a little bit hopeful, but you know, it, it, it's, it's just stepping him into the anger zone again. Because Miles has been out, he's been as Spider-Man, and now he's late to class, and the teacher is chiding him for it, and Ma Miles actually mouths off to the teacher and gets suspended. And so he loses his temper, and then he loses his temper again when he's out fighting a supervillain and just barely stops himself from just pounding on the guy some more. But by the end of the issue, he's resolved all his anger stuff by basically complaining and letting it all out to his parents. You know, he, he's... He's leading this double life. There's a lot of pressure on him. You know, yes, it's going to be stressful, especially when you're a teenager. But he's got this support network in his parents and also with the help of Peter Parker, who is, uh, you know, the original Spider-Man. And so you never really get the feeling like this is something that's ever going to bring him down. The way that Peter Parker has been brought down by his ego over and over again, you know, his overconfidence and having to get slapped down into his place you know and and that's the thing about the marvel characters is that most of them if not all have some sort of fatal flaw you've got tony stark with his arrogance and you've got um captain america with his idealism that he doesn't always recognize might not fit the situation at hand you've got um the hulk and and uh, bruce banner with his childhood that he can't outthink his way out of his abusive childhood and even before the childhood uh issues were introduced way late in the series um you know bruce banner always had this hidden desire to be as powerful as the hulk how he there, there's this part of his psyche that actually likes the fact that he doesn't have to be puny all the time so you've got all these Marvel characters, even Captain Marvel, you know, uh, what's her name, uh, Carol Danvers. Uh, she is, really wants to be an admired and respected hero, and sometimes that winds up leading her to trip up. Uh, those are all fatal flaws that these characters have that make them interesting, and it makes me wish that somebody would introduce a fatal flaw into Miles Morales, but that comes into another point of, you know, what can you introduce? Now, I do think uh, Cody Ziegler has a good idea in introducing some elements from Miles' origin all the way back in uh, The Ultimate Spider-Man number one that uh, where it showed him getting into Brooklyn's Visions Academy on account of a lottery pick. You know, Miles Morales, his, his number was pulled out of a, 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 what do you call it, one of those lottery containers full of balls that have numbers on them. And so he wins the lottery drawing to get into this Brooklyn Visions Academy, and it makes you wonder about the other kids and whether or not that's going to have any impact on them going forward. Now, for all of the Bendis run, it does not, and for all of Saladin Ahmed's run, it does not. But uh, you have Cody Ziegler introducing this girl character now as a supervillain who is basically pissed at Miles for having gotten the slot that she wanted. So now we have a possibility of getting into some deeper themes that were opened up at the beginning of Miles's career, or at least Miles's story, that we can now see full, more fully explored and fleshed out. Um, the other thing that I'm noticing, though, that leaves me a little bit not hopeful is the fact that he has got he, Miles is starting to adopt some more black vernacular than he's ever used in the past. Why you slippin' is not something I've ever heard him say. Uh, you were wildin' back there, Miles. I've never heard him use any kind of language like that. So he's his character is slipping into uh, kind of that hip-hop vernacular. And moreover, as he's getting exposure with other black characters in the Marvel Universe, like the detective Misty Knight, uh, he's starting to get lessons about what it's like to be a black superhero. So it seems like part of Cody Ziegler's theme is going to be, it's a black superhero thing you white people may not understand. So um, here's the thing that gets me about, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily know if there's going to be any kind of fatal flaw introduced into Miles Morales. And that is Miles Morales's fatal flaw, the fact that he is this all-around good kid who is always, he's, he's the nice boy, he's the good kid, he's, the, he's the, the person who you'd love to take home to dinner. 
you know, to, or you wouldn't mind your daughter marrying this kid. I mean, there's nothing wrong with him, and there never has been, and I'm starting to wonder if there ever will be, because I'm reminded of what Scott Adams said uh, about his Dilbert characters and how he had to be very careful as a white cartoonist about creating a minority character that had a fatal flaw, because all of his characters are flawed. I mean, Dilbert's always in his head. Uh, the boss is dumb as a rock. Wally is lazy. I forget what the, the, the fatal flaw of uh, the female character is. But he does have a minority character named uh, Asok. And Asok, um, or Asok, I don't remember how to pronounce his name, his flaw is that he's young. So that's not something that can be attributed to his race. He's just a young guy, and that's his flaw, and it could be anybody's. And so Scott Adams had the freedom to assign that particular fatal flaw to him. But, and then he, he never actually uh, created a black character until he created just, just this past year the character of Dave. And Dave's quirk is that it's not even necessarily a flaw. Dave's quirk is that you never know whether he's serious or not. And so he's able to say things like, I identify as white, and, and throw off the boss's affirmative action plans. And you don't know whether he's being serious or not. So uh, that's, I feel like this is necessarily going to come to play in Marvel's own identity politics, because here's what you're going to get. You're going to get people saying, you know, in order to make Miles Morales an interesting superhero, he needs to have some sort of flaw. But what flaw are you going to give the preeminent black character of the Marvel Universe? Are you even allowed to give a, a black character in the Marvel Universe a fatal flaw. I'm not sure that you are. And so I'm really wondering, I mean, as many times as they want to make it anger, is that really going to stick, given that you don't want to turn Miles into a stereotype of an angry black man? So I'm like, what are they going to do? Where can they possibly go? I'm hoping that Cody Ziegler finds a way to make Miles Morales into the three-dimensional character that he deserves to be, because with all of this, you know, time and energy and effort invested in him, you would like to see him become something more than just this black version of Spider-Man that uh, that that people have made uh, his his former writers have made him out to be. I mean, there's just there's just not much to this kid, and I I want there to be more, but I'm I'm lacking the confidence that Marvel is going to be able to do what it needs to do and make him complex rather than a, you know, Steve Ditko idealized Rom Space Knight kind of character who, who basically is going to have it all together eventually. I, I just don't know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically my summary is Miles Morales' fatal flaw is that he has no fatal flaw, and that makes him a flat, two-dimensional character who there is little hope for until they can start injecting some personality into this kid. And I hope they manage it at some point, because I I, I mean, I would just like to see Miles Morales uh, come into his own. So, I'm Mike Martika. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, please share it on Twitter, where I'm permabanned, and uh, that way you can get some more circulation. Uh, also, do subscribe so that you can be notified of the next time I comment on comics or anything else, politics, religion, Twitter. Um, and then uh, other than that, I will see you all later. Take care.